From the Thai Cats Audio Network, this is Task and Twos. Welcome to Task and Twos. I'm Luke Tasker, and I'm joined by Andy Fantuz, one of the all time greats, outstanding Canadian of the year, 2010. Andy, great to see you, man. I'm going to start the one, start the show off today asking the question that you are famous for asking at the start of our work days as Thai Cats. What are you getting better at today, Andy Fantuz? Today, I'm trying to be extra patient with my daughter in, uh, <laughs> when, yeah, when, when she's getting a, a little fussy. And, uh, and, and that's one thing that I, I woke up today saying, that's what I'm going to do better today. How about you? Oh man, that isn't that funny. That's like the, that's like the thing you, that, uh, that's the way that we get better as people. And uh, now it used to be like, whenever you'd ask me that, my, my answer was something like, you know, I want to like work on my stride today or like late hands to the catch or like ID every defense when we get to the line of scrimmage, uh, this morning though, buddy, I've got three, three, six sons in my house. Nothing serious, no COVID or anything, just little kid stuff. But my uh, my getting better today is is in the fatherhood uh, category for sure, hundred <laughs> percent. Patience, uh, boy, just about every other uh, virtue that I'm that I'm short of. So, yeah, man, that's the that's the battle. Once you're uh, once you're not a player anymore, you're you're what are you getting better at today? Answers start to change a little bit. I did love that mindset though of you know just picking something something small just to just to focus on on top of you know just the regular the the, the practice uh yeah. i did find that it, you know adding a little bit to your toolbox every single day will will at the end of the season you'll be a better player so i i really i really enjoyed that whole philosophy we i think we touched on it like a little bit earlier uh, at one of the earlier shows uh this year but I thought that was a great piece of your like leadership and your mentality of the day. Where did you, where did you get that from? What was that? Uh, did you, did that come, uh, was that your own invention? No, I, you know, I, I hope I'm not making a mistake here, but I think I got that from, uh, from Paul Lapolice when he was our nice. receiver coach in Saskatchewan. And then he ended up being the OC. And then, uh, anyway, you all, we all know, you know, he's in, in Ottawa now, but, uh, I, I believe I got it from him. He just asked me that like a couple times and then, and then I really like it, I really stuck with me and it was something that I, I echoed amongst the group and, uh, and then I just continued on for, you know, for 12 years, I guess, or yeah. another 10 years. It was awesome, man. Yeah. Like it's just something like something small, right? Like, and like you said, I'm just, just my stride length or, or, uh, if, it's got to be specific though, because you remember all the rookies or whatever the young guys. What do you work? Uh, uh, running good routes. It's like yeah. no, that's not that's not the point. You can't say that. Back of the line. The yeah. uh, the, oh, the deer in the headlight of the rookies when you start when you start getting that question out because it's hilarious because they really you know they're not like I, <laughs> uh, he'll he'll be happy that that we uh, that we uh, thought of him. He's a great guy, so I'm not afraid to mention him for this reason. But Giovanni Aprile. <laughs> uh johnny april he uh my man would get stunned with the what are you working on today question like every week like he would for, he would forget to have an answer ready because that's the thing if you were one of the young guys like you, it's not just about trying to get better like you also wanted to have a good answer for when andy to come to ask you but some guys just couldn't learn man you, you just get a you just get a you, for the whole season just bad after bad answer after bad answer but uh, in a serious serious way though. Like it is a great way of thinking as a player when you, you take the field with like, not just like, not just the mindset of like, okay, I'm just going to have a good practice. I just do everything good. Like really like today I want to get better at like my stop, like my stopper angle foot, like my, the top of my route though, like the one, two, three of my feet, that's what I want to get better on. And boy, it, it's a great, it's a great mindset to have, but it also, it, it, it uh, <laughs> gave us some, some funny moments on the field as well. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, you go through a season and and it, and it really does fly by, you know. And and yeah, you're getting, you're practicing every day, and you're getting, becoming a better player. But I find that like that extra little focus on something specific is is how you really develop. So, yeah, yeah, man, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, we just finished up a special edition, uh, special edition, special edition Tie Cats Audio Network podcast with. 
some of the guys from the 2013 uh, uh, Eastern semifinal in Toronto. And that was just, that was just kind of an awesome time. I feel like we could have talked about that game for another three hours, uh, but the podcast is great for those listening. If you want to check that out on the Ticats audio network or your podcatcher, it is uh, really, really fun to think back about that. Andy, one thing we didn't get into in that game was Hank Burris, of course. And I mean, you and you and you had more than 10 catches, more than a hundred yards that game. And Hank was just, you know, I, I recounted on the, on our special edition podcast that I had just gotten up to uh, Canada effectively. And Hank had thrown my first touchdown pass earlier that season. And uh, in that game, when you rewatch it, like he was, he was awesome, man. Like he was, you know, it wasn't perfect. Like we had mistakes offensively, but, but he was making it happen, running for first downs. He was finding you at least once a drive, you know, for an important first down. Like that was just a very exciting matchup. It was good to see, good to watch uh, Hank Burris play again. Yeah. I was thinking about that when we were talking about how young the team was and how many rookies we had that year that, uh, right. that, that ended up being, you know, stars in this league. And, and, and I was thinking, oh, what about Hank? You know, <laughs> he yeah, brought really. the upper change up a bit, but what, <laughs> what league, though, right? Like, how, how are you the oldest guy in the team? And you're, you know, listening to, to, to like rave music and like you're the one <laughs> leading the, uh, the pregame speech and getting yeah. all these guys half your age, like jacked up to go out and play. Uh, Smiling Hank, man, he's a legend. Smiling Hank, he he really is. We had, yeah, we talked about some of the rookies because there were, I was, there was a lot of like impactful rookies uh, on that team, but Marwan Marwan Hage Hagee, uh, Tim O'Neill, Hank Burris, like we had some, we had some salty vets too, man, which is cool. Oh, um, that's yeah, just had, offensively. We had Fig, we had Greg White, Jeez. we had that, uh, uh, that was awesome, who, man. Who was on the other side there? Oh, why am I? We kept on back? we kept on thinking Simone, but we were with uh well we were with Jamal Johnson on the on the podcast uh too and uh Luke what are you what are you looking for like what matchups are you looking forward to seeing in this game Yeah man you you already know what I'm gonna say I I want to see the Hamilton passing offense have some production like they've had almost every week of the last maybe two months of football except the the previous matchup in Toronto so I want to see that kind of you know, get right again. I'd love to see that early on. And even that, that Toronto game was, was so crazy. I mean, they, Tommy Condell and Jeremiah Mazzoli were really going for it. Right. And there were small misses, just slight, slight uh, edges that they uh, couldn't get in that Toronto game that, you know, I'd love to see a similar approach like that and uh, to, to go right for Toronto. What about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Same, man. I, uh, I think they have an opportunity to get up over top of these guys, um, you know, Toronto's got a ton of length in their secondary. So accuracy and passing is going to be crucial. So hopefully yeah. the weather, hopefully the weather's good because I think the shortest DB for Toronto is the tallest receiver for the tight guys, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> wow. so you don't want to yeah. be throwing up like those, those jump balls necessarily. Uh, um, yeah. But there will be guys open because these guys can run routes and, and, uh, and the other one, you know, of course it's the line of scrimmage is where it's going to be won. One and lost, one or lost this game. Uh, uh, as always, as always, if if I I'm really looking forward to seeing that tie cat front seven and and yeah. even the secondary who when they're when they're coming and filling, just continue to continue to get after it because uh, they've been just outstanding so far. Yeah, well, it's going to be great. I want to I, I end with this thought. We were, uh, like we discussed, we just had this podcast with, with uh, discussing the uh, 2013 East Final. And as I watched through some of that film, I mean, it's kind of amazing. You see a young Speedy B wearing a number 87 with dreads. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Simone Lawrence and Jeremiah Mazzoli all on that team. And it's just like, it's just kind of like amazing to, to see that, to think about those guys. And like, it makes me even a little bit more, you know, attached and excited for this weekend's game where those same guys are still a tie cats and trying to go get a gray cup. So excited to see those guys and, and this year's team go, go, uh, make it happen. Yeah, man. Oh, that, that like last weekend was the playoffs. The, both those games were incredible. And then, yeah, awesome. And I, and I think these ones will be as well. It's just, just a love CFL playoffs. 
Awesome, man. to say. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. Well, cool. The uh, broadcast starts at 1030 on Sunday morning as you get ready for the 1 o'clock kickoff in Toronto. Twos, I will see you there for the broadcast, man. Looking forward to it. Yeah, same. Task and Twos. Like and subscribe to Hang With Them Weekly.